Hey everyone, check it out. Here's the newest addition to my lab. I'm extremely grateful to Tektronix for sending me this oscilloscope and I plan to make a bunch of videos showing off what you can do with it. So to start, I uh, thought we'd do something kind of simple for an oscilloscope, uh, but it does make use of some of the features there and I learned something interesting along the way. I recently had my car smogged and the attendant measured engine RPM by putting a plug into the cigarette lighter. So I thought I'd try it myself and see how reliable that signal is. So to set up the scope, uh, I, I put it into the default mode just so you can see everything that I'm going to change here. Uh, we're going to make some assumptions about what kind of a signal that we're going to get out of the cigarette plug. Uh, the idea is that when the ignition coil fires in the car, that's going to produce a little spike, an inductive spike in the waveform. And uh, by measuring those spikes, we can figure out how often the ignition coil is fi firing and how uh, fast the motor is turning. So I'm going to turn this down and we can make a few more assumptions uh, knowing a bit about the car itself. So if it's a six cylinder car uh, and the engine is turning about 750 RPM at idle, then uh, it's, and it's a four stroke engine, so, it's gonna, so each cylinder is going to fire once every other engine rotation and it has six cylinders, so that's three firings per revolution, uh, 750 RPM divided by 60, let's just say in about 600, it's about 10 revolutions per second or a little bit more, times three, uh, gives us about 30 hertz. So at idle, we would expect to see these inductive spikes at approximately 30 hertz. So just to get us in the right ballpark, uh, I'm gonna set up the scope on the bench here and then we'll take it out to the car and I'm going to put my finger on the probe just to get a, a sort of a dirty looking 60 hertz signal. Uh, this is just picking up power line noise in the lab here. So I'm going to uh, turn off persistence and I'm going to set the trigger level here and uh, push the signal up here. So one, uh, sort of the first attempt, if we had a nice clean periodic signal like this, what we could do is just measure the period, of course, and that would give us the engine RPM. However, if uh, the signal we're going to get from the car is much more uh, unclear, the inductive spikes are very noisy, I mean, very ragged, and there's lots of other things that are superimposed on top. So to um, make our job a little bit easier, I'm going to use an FFT. So I select the math function and then FFT, and I'm going to make the time base uh, fairly long so that we can get good resolution down at the bottom of the FFT. Uh, we're interested in signals around 30 hertz or, or, or thereabouts and so we need a long uh, time acquisition here to get those low frequencies. Uh, one thing I like about the tech that I haven't seen on many other scopes is the numeric entry. So down here we can change the uh, center point and uh, spatial resolution or frequency resolution of the FFT and you could use the knob to do this but if you already know what you want like we, we already I already know that I want maybe about 50 Hertz for the uh, frequency per division and uh, if we want to change the uh, center point since we're kind of looking way off in the middle of the FFT we could set the center point to be something like 100 Hertz and then we've already dialed this thing in without dealing with the wheels here I thought that was a nice feature that doesn't show up too often. So I'm going to move this down uh, just to make it a little easier to see and we can see we've got a nice peak here. So we could uh, measure this with a cursor. We could turn on cursors and if I hold down the cursors button it gives me the, the menu here so I'll say bring on screen and then use a this guy and it's telling us the A cursor is right about here and the A cursor is 60.5 Hertz so that all makes sense. Um, however it would be nice if we could track this peak and so I came up with a little hack here that I don't know if uh, tech was really thinking it would be used this way but I found it to work. So if we turn cursors off we can use this wave inspector search function. So I'll turn search on turn search on and what we're going to be looking for is uh, a slope or a, an edge and I'm actually going to select both rising and falling edges and the source is going to be uh, the math function, the FFT that we just set up. And then we can set a threshold 
So it's giving us this red line here. And as I dial the threshold up and down, you can see what's happening. It's actually putting little markers up here telling us uh, that it's found an event. So I'll set it high so that we only get the markers on this first big peak. And uh, the cool function, the interesting thing about this, if we go back to the search menu, we can pull up a table of all the events that the search has found. And this is real time. So if I take my finger off the probe, uh, after it processes the next set of stuff there, it goes away. And if I put my finger back, uh, the data comes back. And this makes sense. So it's showing us the rising and the falling edge of, the, uh, of that first peak. So this will work. If, in theory, if we go to the car and plug this thing in, we will have uh, a spike at the frequency caused by the inductive kicks from the ignition coil and then we can use this automatic tracker to tell us what the frequency is. I was looking for a search type that would tell me the center location of this of this peak, but I, I couldn't figure that out. And for this thing, it, you know, we're not really looking for super high accuracy stuff, so I figured we could just do rising and falling. I noticed that if we uh, change the threshold carefully enough, you can actually get it to just do a single event because there's not enough resolution. And so if the peak stays at about the same amplitude, you can get in there with a really high threshold and then if we check the table um, it's only going to give us one point even though it's finding rising and falling edges and it's pretty much right on the money so to plug this into the car I just made this super simple adapter it's just a cigarette lighter going straight into the scope and I used AC coupling so the way I look at it is if you want to measure engine RPM you might as well do it in style so I used my DeLorean as the test subject for this uh, experiment and uh, plugged it into the uh, console mounted cigarette lighter and collected a waveform that looked like this. So what I did here was collected a long record length uh, of data from the car and stored it as uh, reference one just so we can look at it here in the shop. And as you can see there are inductive kicks in the signal here, and they're actually quite big. So if I, um, R1 is actually one volt per division, and so you can see the spike here is easily a volt. It's actually a little bit more. Um, but just from inspecting it, you can see there's something strange going on here. The spikes are not evenly spaced, which was a bit of a surprise to me. At first I thought there must have been something wrong with my setup. I mean, how could an engine have uneven ignition timing? But I learned something unusual. The engine in the DeLorean is a V6, but the spacing, like the, the angle between the cylinders is 90 degrees. And uh, due to manufacturing difficulties, they decided to uh, not fix the cam or not fix the crankshaft so that the cylinders would fire evenly. So the motor actually fires in an uneven way where it has this kind of gallopy sort of loping pattern to it. You can search, I'll put some links in the description there, but you can see that some V6 engines uh, that are spaced at 90 degrees um, have this strange odd firing sequence. You can see here why this is the case. So in a V6 engine, uh, it's very common to have two cylinders share the same journal on the crankshaft. And if they do this, the journals have to be spaced at 120 degrees so that they're even for a rotation. But since the cylinders are spaced at 90 degrees, there's going to be this strange sort of beat frequency between the 120 degrees of the shaft and the 90 degrees spacing of the cylinders. You can fix this by changing the point where these uh, pistons connect to the crankshaft, but if you don't fix it mechanically, you basically have to live with this kind of uneven firing sequence. So if we turn cursors back on, um, I will hold down the cursors button again and uh, change the selected waveform to be R1. And um, if we want to measure one of the short periods, put the A cursor there and the B cursor here just to get kind of an approximate reading we're kind of at about 20 milliseconds delta and the longer uh, interval is more like 32 milliseconds and then if we switch the cursors to the FFT okay so the A cursor at this first peak this is this is garbage that's too low frequency we're at 38 Hertz for that first peak and uh, about 57.5 hertz for the second peak. 
And what we're really interested in is the average because we don't care about, we were trying to ignore this kind of lopiness to the engine. So if we take the average of the two periods that we have and uh, divide by 3 and multiply by 60, we get 689 RPM, which is pretty reasonable. That's about the idle speed of the car. So back at the car, you can see that with the table pulled up, we can uh, have those two peaks highlighted for us. And if we step on the gas pedal and raise the engine RPM, you can see that the table updates in real time, and then we can pull the new values out. And in this case, it gets up to about uh, 60 and 120 hertz. And if we take the average of all that, we get about 1800 RPM. So I thought that was an interesting little experiment. If you wanted to implement this in a microcontroller, it would be very easy to AC couple this signal and feed it into a comparator and basically just trigger every time you have one of these high spikes. In this case, all the other, uh, this, is, this is like alternator noise and other noise from the electronics on the car, the engine control electronics. But those ignition spikes are very high compared uh, pretty much to everything else. So it would be easy to pick them out with a comparator. Uh, you could trigger an interrupt and just measure the time interval. Although, interestingly enough, since some engines are odd firing, you'd have to take into account that the interval varies uh, every other time. So you would have to take an average over eight samples or something like that. Okay, see you next time. Bye.